Welcome to Made on Maple Street. I'm Andrea, and I'm glad you're here. One day, while scrolling through Instagram, I stumbled upon a brilliant creation by my friend Chris from ZNC Design, an incredible interchangeable lemonade stand. The concept of using the same stand while changing the signs and embellishments to match each season truly captivated me. I reached out to Chris, and he generously allowed me to incorporate some of these stands into my videos. Thank you, Chris. In today's video, I'll be showcasing several new crate stands and revisiting all the stands I've previously made. This way, you'll have a comprehensive reference for recreating any of these delightful stands in the future. Without further ado, let's dive right in! For the basic structure, I started with a wood crate from Dollar Tree, a jumbo craft stick, and a wooden dowel. I turned the crate over on its side, placed a dowel rod on the bottom left corner of the crate, and traced around the dowel rod. I did the same on the right side as well. Then I drilled holes in the crate right where I drew the circles. I marked the dowel's center and used steel snips to cut it in half. Next, I trimmed one of the rounded ends off of the craft stick. To ensure the craft stick was the same width as the crate, I placed it on the crate and drew a line where I wanted to cut. Then I used my steel snips to cut on the line and sanded off the rough edges with a sanding sponge. I used a baby wipe to give all the wooden pieces a coat of antique wax from Waverly. Once the pieces dried, it was time to start assembling the stand. I put one dowel rod in each hole and secured them using wood glue. Next, I attached the craft stick to the back of the dowels and used Dollar Tree clamps to hold it in place while it dried. Then I took three magnets out of a pack from Dollar Tree. I used hot glue to attach one magnet to the front of the crate. I attached two more magnets to the craft stick I glued to the dowels earlier. I turned the stand around and glued two clothespins to the inside of the crate, one on each side. I also created another version of the crate stand, only this time I painted the crate, craft stick, and clothespins with white chalk paint. You'll see both versions of the stand throughout this video. To make the sign for the top of the stand, I used a craft stick from a package I bought at Walmart. I cut off one of the rounded ends of the stick with my steel snips. Then I set the craft stick on the existing craft stick on the stand to determine where I needed to make the second cut. After sanding the rough edges on the ends of the stick, I gave the front and sides a coat of white chalk paint. I used my Cricut machine to cut the word lemonade out of black adhesive vinyl and applied it to the center of the craft stick. Dollar Tree sells letter stickers that would work for this as well. I decided to make two different signs for the front of the crate. For the first sign, I started with a small circular wooden disc. I gave the disc several coats of yellow chalk paint and then used a pencil to draw lines to make it resemble a lemon slice. Then I used a white paint marker to finish the lemon design. To assemble the piece, I took three button magnets from a package I purchased at Dollar Tree and placed one magnet on each of the existing magnets on the crate. I used hot glue to attach the lemon slice to the bottom magnet. Then I put hot glue on the top magnets and stuck the lemonade sign onto those magnets. For the second sign on the front of the crate, I took a chalkboard tag clothespin from a pack I bought at Dollar Tree. I used my heat tool to warm up the glue between the clothespin and the chalkboard and carefully pulled them apart. Then I cut the text, fresh squeezed 25 cents out of white adhesive vinyl, attached it to the tag and glued a magnet to the back. To make a banner for the stand, I cut a piece of jute twine and tied knots in the ends. I wrapped the twine around the front of the crate and clipped it into the clothespins on the back. Mm -hmm. 
I picked up some lemon ribbon at Dollar Tree and cut it into small banner pieces. Then, I carefully glued the pieces of ribbon to the twine, trying not to get any glue on the crate. To create an embellishment for the top of the crate, I took a mini glass container from a pack I bought at Dollar Tree. Although I wanted to fill the jar with polymer clay lemon slices, I had a package of polymer clay candies in my stash, so I sorted out the yellow ones and added them to the jar. To finish off the stand, I purchased a mini cup and pitcher from Timu and added them to the top of the crate beside the jar. If you're a fan of easy, affordable DIY projects and seasonal decor, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I post a new video. To make the sign for the top of this stand, I cut the text Flower Shop out of black adhesive vinyl and attached it to a craft stick that I previously trimmed and painted white. For the sign on the front, I added the text Bloom and Grow to a small Dollar Tree chalkboard tag. The fonts and tools I used in this video are listed in the description if you're interested. After placing magnets on the existing magnets on the crate, I glued the signs in place with hot glue. To make a garland for the crate, I started by removing several flowers from a Dollar Tree floral pick. I wanted the flowers to be pink, so I colored them with a pink Sharpie marker. After wrapping a piece of twine around the crate and clipping it into the clothespins on the back, I secured the flowers to the twine with hot glue. I wanted to add visual interest to the flowers, so I glued tiny faux pearl stickers to the center of each one. Since I was creating a flower shop, I wanted to add a planter of flowers to the front of the crate. I used a wooden candle cup from Joanne as the planter and placed a small piece of a Dollar Tree floral pick inside. To finish the flower shop stand, I placed two Timu mini plants on top of the crate and set a small Hobby Lobby basket of flowers in front of the piece. Are you on Instagram? I'd love to connect with you there. Come find me at Made on Maple Street. For the sign at the top of the stand, I purchased a set of foam letter stickers from Hobby Lobby and found the letters to make the word congrats. I used Barely Art craft glue to adhere the letters to a craft stick that I trimmed and painted with white chalk paint. I thought about making a sign for the front of the crate that says Class of 2023, but I wanted to be able to reuse the embellishment in the future, so I decided to use a star instead. I purchased black glitter vinyl from Dollar Tree and cut out a square large enough to fit over the front of the star. Then I removed the backing from the vinyl and set it on my craft table sticky side up. I placed the star on the vinyl and trimmed off the excess with a craft knife. I needed something to hold balloons, so I took the largest flower pot out of a set from Dollar Tree. I used a baby wipe to apply a coat of antique wax and set the pot aside to dry. I purchased a set of mini balloons from Timu that I knew would be a perfect embellishment for the stand. The colors were a little too bright for this project, so I used black, silver, and gold paint to give them a makeover. To keep the paint from scratching off the balloons, I gave them each a coat of glossy Mod Podge. I stuck a bamboo skewer in the bottom of each balloon, which was very helpful when applying the Mod Podge. To assemble the piece, I took three button magnets from a package I purchased at Dollar Tree and placed one magnet on each of the existing magnets on the crate. I used hot glue to attach the star to the bottom magnet. Then I put hot glue on the top magnets and stuck the congrats sign onto those magnets. To make a banner for the stand, I found a silver star garland in my stash that I purchased on clearance after Christmas. I wrapped the garland around the front of the crate and clipped it into the clothespins on the back. For the top of the crate, I purchased a set of mini graduation items from Michaels and placed the items on the stand. I 
I put a small styrofoam ball in the flower pot from earlier and secured it in place with hot glue. Then I stuck the wires that came with the balloons down into the styrofoam ball. I trimmed the wires with a wire cutter and put the balloons on the wires, doing my best to separate the colors. To make the balloon arrangement look more polished, I put tacky glue over the styrofoam ball in the pot and used tweezers to place silver styrofoam beads into the glue. The beads were another Christmas clearance purchase. For this stand, I wanted the ends of the sign to be jagged, so I used steel snips to cut notches in both ends of a craft stick. After sanding the rough edges on the ends of the stick, I gave the front and sides a coat of white chalk paint. I used my Cricut machine to cut the word barbecue out of black vinyl and applied it to the center of the craft stick. To make a small sign for the front of the crate, I applied the text grillin' and chillin' to a Dollar Tree chalkboard tag. To assemble the piece, I placed a magnet on each of the existing magnets on the crate and glued the signs in place. To make a banner, I cut small triangle pieces out of a blue flag from a fabric banner I had in my stash. Then, I carefully glued the triangles to a piece of twine that I wrapped around the crate. To go along with the barbecue theme, I purchased a mini grill from Michaels and set it in front of the crate. I purchased a set of mini flower pots at Dollar Tree and filled one of them with pieces of a silver sparkly pick because I thought they looked like sparklers. Next, I filled a mini glass jar with red, white, and blue polymer sprinkles and set it on top of the crate. I finished the stand by filling a larger glass jar with red, white, and blue polymer straws and placing it on the crate. It would have also looked cute with mini hamburgers and hot dogs on the stand too. I started this project by cutting the word fireworks out of vinyl and attaching the text to a craft stick that was previously trimmed and coated in antique wax. Since the vinyl wasn't sticking very well, I gave it a coat of matte Mod Podge to make sure the letters stayed in place. Next, I took two small stars out of a set of wooden cutouts that I purchased at Dollar Tree. I also used one larger star that I had left over from a pack I bought around Christmas time. Then I used steel snips to cut a dowel rod into three pieces of varying lengths. I quickly sanded all of the ends using my sanding block. I used Waverly's lacquer chalk paint to paint one small star and the longest piece of dowel rod. I gave the large star and the medium piece of dowel rod a coat of white chalk paint. Then I used Nantucket Blue Folk Art Chalk Paint to paint the last small star in the shortest piece of dowel rod. I also gave one wooden bead a coat of black chalk paint. Once the pieces were dry, I glued a small piece of jute twine to the top of each dowel rod. I used a bit of hot glue to attach the dowel pieces into a bundle. Then I trimmed all of the pieces of jute twine. Next, I filled the hole in the wooden bead with hot glue and stuck another piece of jute twine into the glue. After trimming the twine, I used a fine tip white paint marker to write TNT on the bead. For the fireworks sign, I used tacky glue to attach the stars to the top. To make a sign for the front of the crate, I cut the word kaboom out of white vinyl and attached it to a Dollar Tree chalkboard tag. I cut fireworks out of red shimmer vinyl and placed them above the text. Then I placed three Dollar Tree magnets on the existing magnets on the crate. I put hot glue on the magnets and set the signs in place. 
Next, I cut a Dollar Tree scarf into thin strips. I finished the firework stand by attaching the fabric strips to a piece of twine that I wrapped around the crate. For this project, I started with two unfinished wooden apples out of a pack from Dollar Tree. I gave one apple a coat of lacquer chalk paint and the other apple a coat of fern chalk paint. To make some tiny apples for the display, I purchased a pack of multi-sized wood beads from Dollar Tree and sorted about 25 of the second smallest beads into two sandwich bags. I put a spoonful of lacquer paint into one of the bags and rolled the beads around in the paint. I repeated the same process with the other bag of beads, rolling them around in the fern color paint. I removed the beads from the bags and used a paper towel to wipe away the excess paint. Next, I painted two bamboo skewers brown. I also painted the stems of the larger apples from earlier. Once the skewers were dry, I placed a small bead on a skewer and then secured the skewer to the bead using a dab of hot glue. Then I used steel snips to cut the skewer so that only a short stem remained sticking out of the bead. When the stems were all attached to the beads, I used brown paint to touch up the exposed wood. To make leaves for the apples, I cut individual leaves off of a pick of Dollar Tree foliage and then secured the leaves to the tops of the beads using hot glue. Once the apples were complete, I placed them into many wooden crates that I picked up on clearance at Michael's. Then I cut off some larger leaves and glued them onto the larger apples that I cut in half with my steel snips. For the sign at the top of the crate, I used a large craft stick that I previously trimmed and coated in antique wax. I cut the word apples out of white vinyl and applied it to the center of the craft stick. I used hot glue to attach the apple halves to the sign beside the text. For the sign on the front of the crate, I cut the phrase pick your own out of vinyl and attached it to the center of a Dollar Tree chalkboard tag. To make a mini jar of apple cider, I took a mini glass container from a pack I purchased at Dollar Tree and removed the lid. I bought an epoxy resin kit from Michaels and followed the instructions in the box to create the resin mixture. To get the resin to mimic the color of apple cider, I added a few drops of acrylic ink and mixed it thoroughly. I poured the resin mixture into the glass container, placed a cinnamon stick in the resin, and set it aside to harden. For the banner on the front of the stand, I cut Dollar Tree ribbon into small pieces and cut a V-shape into one end of each piece of ribbon. Then I carefully glued the pieces of ribbon to a piece of jute that I wrapped around the crate. Next, I attached the signs to the magnets on the front and top of the stand. To add some embellishments to the stand, I placed an apple crate on top of the stand, set the faux cider beside it, and set another crate of apples in front of the stand. I started this stand by taking two pumpkin picks out of a pack from Dollar Tree. I used steel snips to trim the sticks so that they mimicked the stems of pumpkins. Then I painted both of the stems brown. I cut the word pumpkins out of white adhesive vinyl and centered it on a craft stick that I previously trimmed and coated in antique wax. I used hot glue to attach the pumpkins to the sign. To make a banner for the stand, I cut several flags out of a piece of Dollar Tree ribbon and attached them to a piece of twine that I wrapped around the stand. I placed Dollar Tree magnets on the crate's existing top magnets. Then I put hot glue on the top magnets and stuck the pumpkin sign onto those magnets. For the sign on the front of the stand, I used the same pick your own sign that I made for the previous stand. To create an embellishment for the piece, I removed the cork from a Dollar Tree mini glass container. I also took one sunflower out of a pack from Dollar Tree and folded the stem in half. I filled the container three quarters full of hot glue and placed the flower into the glue. 
I set the flower on the crate and this simple pumpkin stand was finished. To make the sign for the top of this trick or treat stand, I used another giant craft stick that I picked up from Walmart. I wanted the ends of the sign to be jagged, so I used steel snips to cut notches in both ends of the craft stick. I gave the front, back, and sides of the craft stick two coats of warm beige paint. Next, I took a wooden bat from a pack of Dollar Tree stickers. I used a fine tip black paint marker to paint the front and sides of the bat and glued the bat to the left side of the sign. I wanted to add a little sparkle to the sign, so I put a thin layer of tacky glue all over the bat. I sprinkled chunky black glitter all over the bat and tapped the sign on the table to remove the excess glitter. For the text on the sign, I used my Cricut machine to cut the words trick or treat out of matte black vinyl and applied the text to the craft stick. To create a small sign for the front of the crate, I applied the text Witches Welcome to a chalkboard tag. Next, I placed button magnets on each of the existing magnets on the crate. I used hot glue to attach the Witches Welcome sign to the bottom magnet. Then I put hot glue on the top magnets and stuck the Trick or Treat sign onto those magnets. I wanted to add a few embellishments to the crate, so I took a jack-o'-lantern out of a pack I purchased at Michael's. Since I was going with a pastel theme, I gave the jack-o'-lantern a makeover with a light pink paint marker. To create a banner for the front of the crate, I purchased a light-up skull necklace at Big Lots. I wrapped the necklace around the front of the crate and used the clothespins on the back to secure it in place. For the final embellishment, I took an unfinished wood peg doll from a pack I bought at Lowe's. I gave the entire peg doll a quick coat of plaster chalk paint, and off camera, I glued a small cube to the bottom of the doll to add a bit more height. Then I grabbed an old shirt from the donation pile and cut a circle out of the fabric. I draped the fabric over the peg to make a ghost. To make eyes, I cut two small ovals out of black felt from Dollar Tree and used hot glue to attach them to the front of the ghost. For the sign at the top of this stand, I used steel snips to cut notches in the ends of a craft stick, just like I did for the previous project. After giving the front and sides a coat of black chalk paint, I applied the text Potions and Spells that I cut out of silver shimmer vinyl. I used the same vinyl for the Pick Your Poison text on the chalkboard tag. Next, I glued the signs to the magnets that I placed on the existing magnets on the crate. For the banner on the front of this stand, I used an LED ghost necklace from Big Lots. I wrapped the necklace around the front of the crate and used the clothespins on the back to secure it in place. To embellish the top of this stand, I purchased a cute wizardry set from Michaels and arranged the items on top of the crate. I finished this piece by adding a small straw broom out of a pack I purchased at Hobby Lobby. For this sign, I gave the front, back, and sides of a jumbo craft stick a coat of white chalk paint. 
Then I disassembled a peppermint bundle ornament from Hobby Lobby and used a wire cutter to remove the loops from the tops of the peppermints. I cut the words Santa's Sweet Shop out of red shimmer vinyl and attached them to the right side of the sign. Letter stickers would also work for this if you want to recreate it and don't have a vinyl cutting machine. I broke one of the peppermints in half and used hot glue to adhere it to the left side of the sign. To make a small sign for the front of the crate, I applied the text Christmas Calories Don't Count to a small chalkboard tag. After placing magnets on each of the existing magnets on the crate, I used hot glue to attach the small chalkboard sign to the bottom magnet. Then I put hot glue on the top magnets and stuck the Santa Sweet Shop sign onto those magnets. For the lights on the front of the crate, I used a mini bulb necklace that I purchased from Lowe's. I wrapped the necklace around the front of the crate and used the clothespins on the back to secure the necklace in place. To create a candy jar for the top of the crate, I took a mini glass jar out of a package from Dollar Tree and filled it with mini clay peppermints that I found in the jewelry section of Hobby Lobby. I made a different candy jar by filling another Dollar Tree container with tiny candy ornaments from Hobby Lobby. I wanted the candies to resemble gumdrops, so I used a wire cutter to remove the ends of the ornaments before putting them in the jar. For the lid of the jar, I took it outside to my fancy paint booth and gave it a quick coat of matte red spray paint. Then, I took a small wooden container out of a pack I bought on clearance at Michael's and placed Hobby Lobby candy canes inside. For the final embellishment, I wanted to create a gingerbread man. I took a wooden peg doll out of a pack I bought at Lowe's and gave it a coat of Restore Chalky Finish Paint from DecoArt. I removed the bow from a clay candy cane ornament and used hot glue to attach the bow to the gingerbread man's neck. Two peppermint faux sprinkles became the gingerbread man's buttons. I made two small dots using black fabric paint for the gingerbread man's eyes. To finish the gingerbread man, I used white fabric paint to draw a smile and a squiggly line at the bottom of the peg doll. After looking at the crate stand for a while, I decided to add some glittery snow to the two signs. I lined the tops of the signs with tacky glue and sprinkled Dollar Tree faux snow over the glue. I also decided that I wasn't happy with the color of the stand, so on a whim, I decided to use the white one instead, which is why it looks different from the one I showed earlier. I wanted to demonstrate how to make a sign for the top of the stand without using a Cricut machine. So I purchased a set of wooden letters from Michaels and took out the letters I needed to spell the word workshop. I gave the wooden letters a coat of antique wax and wiped away the excess with a baby wipe. After trimming a jumbo craft stick to fit on the top of the stand, I gave it a coat of red chalk paint. To make sure I applied the letters in a straight line, I placed a piece of painter's tape on the craft stick and attached the letters to the stick with Barely Art craft glue. For the small sign on the front of the crate, I applied the text Naughty or Nice to a chalkboard tag. Then I attached the signs to the stand. 
To make a string of lights for the crate, I purchased a package of holiday light bulbs at Hobby Lobby. I strung the lights on a piece of floral wire and wrapped them around the front of the crate, using the clothespins on the back to help keep the lights in place. To embellish the top of the crate, I found an adorable gift box in the DIY dollhouse section at Hobby Lobby. I also found a fun snow globe in the Christmas jewelry section at Hobby Lobby and placed that on the top of the crate. For the sign on this stand, I trimmed a craft stick and gave it a coat of plaster chalk paint. For the text on the sign, I used my Cricut machine to cut the words kissing booth out of red shimmer vinyl and applied the text to the craft stick. I purchased a wooden lip cutout at Dollar Tree and used hot glue to attach it to the sign as well. To make a sign for the front of the crate, I cut 25 cents out of white vinyl and attached it to a small Dollar Tree chalkboard tag. A chalk marker would also work for this if you don't have a vinyl cutting machine. Next I cut small flags out of red Dollar Tree felt to create a banner for the front. After attaching the signs and wrapping a piece of twine around the front of the crate, I carefully glued the felt flags to the twine. To embellish the top of the crate, I purchased a set of mini flower pots at Dollar Tree and painted one pot with pink chalk paint. I took three heart sticks out of a pack from Dollar Tree and trimmed them with steel snips, making sure they were all slightly different heights. Then I put a large amount of hot glue in the flower pot and placed the sticks inside, holding them in place until the glue hardened. For the sign on this stand, I took a wood shamrock from a pack I purchased at Hobby Lobby and gave it two coats of fern chalk paint. I used hot glue to attach the shamrock to the left side of a craft stick that I previously trimmed and painted with plaster chalk paint. Then I used my Cricut machine to cut the words Lucky Charms out of gold shimmer vinyl and applied the vinyl to the craft stick. If you don't have a vinyl cutting machine, I found some cute alphabet stickers at Dollar Tree that would also work for this sign. Next, I removed a horseshoe from the package of wood cutouts and painted it with gold acrylic paint from Target. Then I added a small amount of Barely Art craft glue to the back of the horseshoe and placed it on the front of a chalkboard tag. After attaching the signs to the stand, I took a mini glass container from a pack I bought at Dollar Tree and filled it with small gold beads. For the second embellishment, I took a slightly larger glass container from a pack and filled it with green Dollar Tree tube confetti. I filled another glass container with multiple shades of green glass beads, also from Dollar Tree. To make a banner for the stand, I purchased a light up shamrock necklace from Hobby Lobby. I wrapped the necklace around the front of the crate and clipped it into the clothespins on the back.
For the egg hunt stand, I took a rabbit and a flower cutout from two packages I purchased at Dollar Tree. At first, I painted the cutouts with folk art English lavender chalk paint, but I didn't like the shade, so I painted over them with a purple paint marker. Off camera, I also painted an egg cutout with the same paint marker. Next, I cut the text Egg Hunt out of light pink adhesive vinyl from Dollar Tree and applied it to the center of a craft stick that I previously trimmed and painted white. I applied the text Every Bunny Welcome to a small chalkboard tag and added some tiny stars that I cut out of pink vinyl. To make sure all the vinyl stayed in place, I applied a coat of matte Mod Podge to each of the signs. After the Mod Podge dried, I attached the bunny and egg cutouts to the egg hunt sign. The cutout shapes needed some dimension, so I used white fabric paint to add a few details to the bunny and the egg. Next, I took an egg from a pack I purchased at Dollar Tree and painted it with yellow acrylic paint. To help the egg stand up on the crate, I glued it to the center of the flower I painted earlier. Then I added a few dots and squiggly lines with more white fabric paint. For the banner on the crate, I cut thin strips of Dollar Tree decorative mesh and fabric and looped them around a piece of twine that I wrapped around the crate. After attaching the signs, I used a small Hobby Lobby basket, some tiny plastic eggs, and a piece of Walmart tinsel to create an Easter basket to set in front of the crate. Off camera, I painted another bunny from the package of wood cutouts and set that on the stand as well. For this project, I started by taking a leaf and a flower out of a pack of wood cutouts from Dollar Tree. I gave the front of the leaf a coat of moss chalk paint. For the flower, I mixed a small amount of pumpkin chalk paint with a dab of hazelnut chalk paint and gave it one coat of the mixture. I cut the word market out of matte white vinyl and centered it on a craft stick that I previously trimmed and coated in antique wax. I arranged the wood cutouts on the craft stick and used hot glue to attach them to the sign. I cut the phrase farm fresh daily out of vinyl and attached it to the center of a chalkboard tag. After attaching the signs to the stand, I cut small banner flags out of Dollar Tree Farmhouse ribbon and carefully glued the flags to a piece of jute twine that I wrapped around the crate. To finish this project, I purchased a few mini crates on sale at Michael's and added them to the stand. To make the sign for the top of this vinyl stand, I cut the text Happy Birthday out of red shimmer vinyl and applied it to a craft stick that I previously trimmed and painted white. Then I cut the text Celebrate out of white vinyl and attached it to a chalkboard tag. After attaching the signs to the crate, I cut banner flags out of Hobby Lobby ribbon and glued them to a piece of jute twine that I wrapped around the crate. I wanted to create a few presents to go along with the stand, so I started by gluing four small wood cubes together with wood glue. Once the glue dried, I cut a small rectangle of paper from a Dollar Tree bag and used it to wrap the cubes. 
I secured the paper to the cubes using a combination of Barely Art craft glue and hot glue. To make the second present, I wrapped a larger Dollar Tree cube with blue adhesive vinyl. I had some tiny felt bows in my stash, so I placed one of the red bows on top of the smaller present. Next, I took one wooden candle cup from a pack I bought at Joanne and gave it a coat of antique wax. I wanted to use the candle cup to hold a bouquet of mini balloons from Timu. After gluing a small styrofoam ball inside the cup, I stuck the wires that came with the balloons down into the ball. I cut a piece of Walmart tinsel and placed it in the cup to cover the styrofoam ball and to help keep the wires from wiggling around. Then I put one balloon on each of the wires. To add a bit of color to the top of the crate, I put mini polymer clay straws in a glass container and set it on the stand beside a tiny gumball machine I purchased at Michael's. That wraps up today's video. Thanks again to my friend Chris for the inspiration. Be sure to check out his Instagram and let him know I sent you. Which crate stand from the video was your favorite? Are there any more stands that you'd like to see? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.